you'll be aware that Ebola is a problem in Sierra Leone, Liberia and Guinea. It is unlikely that we will see patients arriving in a and &E at Burton hospitals with this disease. However, we must be sure that we have the equipment to protect you just in case this situation did arise. And so today is about understanding how to put the equipment on, but more importantly, how to get it off properly without contaminating yourself. Beware of the unconscious actions that you may take whilst you're wearing personal protective equipment, which may be contaminated. You need to work in pairs, checking each other regularly to see that the equipment is put on correctly and taken off correctly. Off is effective and you do not contaminate your, your base layer clothing. All happy? Yes. Any questions about the chances of picking up? I'm not expecting to see a busload of Liberians outside A&E any time soon because you can't get here by direct flight. Um, into East Midlands, you can via um, stopovers uh, go via Charles de Gaulle and into Birmingham. But screening has now not only been set up in, in Heathrow and Gatwick, but also Birmingham and Manchester as well. So patients are screened, or potential patients are screened, or passengers are screened at several points before they arrive here. That's not to say we won't get one. We may actually more likely end up with a scare, and we would only ever keep these patients for a maximum of 12 hours. 24 tops. Why? Well, patient comes in, is appropriately isolated in the facilities we've set aside, we put on the personal protective equipment, we get the blood specimens, we need to exclude malaria, and then the blood specimens are sent to a place called Porton Down in the south of England, where they're analysed and we get the result back in four hours. Now, that's very easy, nine times out of ten at that point, you'll say, this isn't Ebola, and everything stands down. And, we, and that'll be the, the, the most likely outcome. If it is Ebola, then we would notify the appropriate authorities. They will come with a properly equipped ambulance and crew and take that patient to a place in the UK where they can be appropriately cared for. There are several places at the moment. One is the Royal Free. Very long at all. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to actually select a pair of gloves, which is your normal size of gloves from the equipment we've got here. And the next thing I'm going to ask you to do is put a suit on. Now, something I'd like to point out about the suit, it has got a, a strip here, which I would like you not to touch at all, because that's adhesive. And if you actually stick that across the zip when it's on, you'll, you won't be able to get the suit off without ripping it. Yours, Michael, you might be better sitting down to actually get these on. Now, the whole point is that we work as a team here, we're constantly checking one another to make sure we've got the equipment on appropriately. That actually works, doesn't it? Yeah, good. Have a seat again. What I'd like you to put on next is a pair of overshoes. So the next thing we're going to do is put on a plastic apron. This plastic apron is different to plastic aprons you'll have seen in the past. Firstly, it's got long sleeves, and there is a hook at the end of the sleeve in which you should put your thumb. Now, you can't get these on properly by yourself because they've got a shoulder girdle as well, which you need to get properly fitted. And when, you, when, you've, when you've got it on, to start partly on, we'll, we'll show you what to do next. So just a standard yeah, way of putting on a mask, on, on a on an apron. Now if you go behind one and if you turn around so you can actually help, you need to actually get this, can I just show you, this, this just needs to be spread properly across the shoulders and you can do it up for him while you're there and he's going to do the same for you in a minute. The hood goes hook goes underneath. underneath, that's it. Uh -huh. And then we spread that out so it's properly fitting over the shoulder yeah, yeah. and then if you'd like to do the apron up. Right, what we need to do now is to get our, F, uh, our FFP3 respirators on. Have you been fit tested already? We did. Yeah. We did, so it should be no problem getting these on at all. I'll, we'll work on that. Remembering the lower straps go below the ears and the upper strap goes uh, uh, over the crown of the head. 
The black strip is the bit that goes over the nose and will be shaped after you've got it on. Now, you need to spread the mask out. That's it. And then shape it around the nose, pinch it quite firm so it gives you a seal. And then what I'd like you to do is to breathe in very sharply. Excellent. Did you, you, see, you saw there that the mask collapsed down. This indicates that you've got a, a reasonably good seal. And the next thing you need to do is to put your hood up. So we need to capture your hair in the hood. Over, uh, over goes the hood. You just need to make sure that your hair's in there. And this is why you can't do it on your own. Okay. So what you, do, you need to do now is just check that the zip's done up properly on each other because you can't see under your own chin. Two more pieces of equipment to go. Firstly, the visor or the face shield. Now, an important point, if you could just bend forward for me, it's absolutely crucial that you have no skin showing there. So if you check one another that you haven't, that would be good. And the, the last thing uh, you need to do is to put on another pair of gloves. But the, the sleeves of the apron are actually trapped in the gloves to give you a seal. Can I just ask you to put your hands out in front of you, palms upwards? What I'm going to do is deliberately contaminate you now with them. Um, actually contaminate the front of you, yourself with the, with the suit and, of course, touch your visor as well. Just, yeah, absolutely marvellous. So we're going to just check that that's... Where we've got the we've got contamination on the gloves, we've got contamination on the suit, on both of you, which is good. Now, hopefully, by the time we've got the gear off, you will be confident that you can get it off very safely. So, what do you think you're going to lose first? What are you going to lose logically? What would you take off first? The apron goes first, but at the same time, the gloves, the outer gloves, come off with it. So you need to actually help one another here. Actually rip this, so it's, and, and then you break that. Just, just rip it so it comes apart in the middle. And then break that tie as well. And if you turn around and do, do the same for Michael. The object of the exercise is that this, this, this apron comes off folded in on itself so that you do not contaminate any of your... Your, your, your other layers. So it needs to be folded in on itself and the outer gloves need to come off as well. And then they're screwed up into a small ball and it goes, gets disposed of as clinical waste. Do you want to carry on do that? So, excellent. Well done. That's really good technique, that is. Okay, so open the clinical waste. Okay, the next thing that needs to go is um, your visor. And you take hold of it by the sides and you lift it off and forwards. And there you go, as clinical waste. Now, the next thing is the difficult bit is getting out of the suit. And again, you need to actually help one another. So if you undo one another's suits, for uh, undo the zips, because if you actually use the sticky tape and that suit's contaminated, when you're ripping the suit off, which is what you'd have to do, you will actually be contaminated if, if you're grossly contaminated. So what you need to do is, for each other, you need to take the hood off. Excellent. And then, working from behind the individual, you need to slide the suit off just to the point of the elbows, because at that point, Michael can then take charge of his own suit removal, but he can't until his elbows are free. And Michael needs to do the same for you now. Good. Just to the elbows. Okay. Now you've got control. You can take, take, a, take a seat, whatever you need to do. What you, what you need to do is to be absolutely clear that your sleeves come inside out and so do, you, so do your legs. So the, the suit should be inside out by the time it comes off. It might be easier to use, sit down and use the seat. But again, you can keep the suit to practice with. So. And at this point, 
we'd like you to remove your gloves, making sure that they're folded inside out. And I will now ask you to carry out, once you've actually disposed of the gloves, I will ask you to physically carry out hand hygiene, please, using soap and water. So, what we need to do now is you, you grasp the bottom strap and remove the mask away from your face and dispose of as clinical waste. And then I'd like you to carry out hand hygiene again. Soap and water wash. This time, when your hands are dry, please follow it with the, the, the um, hand sanitizer foam. Soap and water wash followed by hand sanitizer foam. Thank you for watching. You've just seen personal protective equipment put on correctly, but more importantly, it's been taken off correctly, such that the individuals have not contaminated themselves. Remember, if we have an Ebola case, which is most unlikely, or even an Ebola scare, which is also unlikely, you must actually wear personal protective equipment to protect you from potential infection.